There you go. Okay. Can you, you can hear me now. Yes. Thank you. Okay. There we go. All right. So uh, just briefly share a little bit about some uh, perspective in terms of ways that you might be able to find grants to support your seed work. So at Organic Seed Alliance, we've uh, done a lot of grant writing over the years and uh, have some experience in kind of navigating this landscape. And I think some of the thoughts that you might want to consider as you're looking for ways to support your seed work in using grants are, first off, you know, what are you hoping to do with your funding? This is, again, if you kind of look at it through a lens of, um, you know, what is it that you want? And then understanding what is it that grants might actually fund. Um, what we'll find out is that there are limitations in terms of what the different grants will fund. And so finding the grants that align with what you want to do, um, both in terms of kind of the work that's being done and then in terms of the specific things that the grant would pay for um, is a consideration. I'm gonna run through some of those grants in a second, but this is kind of the, the way I often sort of filter down. A lot of times uh, when, when we're thinking about our work and things that are funded by grants. Sometimes I think of it as like a big puzzle um, where there's the overall landscape of like, here are the things we know, here's the, the future that we wanna get to. Um, and recognizing that it's like, we're not going to necessarily, at least not for us, it's like find something that's going to fund everything, but instead it's like, okay, here's a piece of the puzzle that's really, where the grant is really interested in focusing maybe on, you know, beginning seed growers, you know, and that's a piece of the puzzle, right? You know, it's like, okay, well, we can fill in that piece or here's one, you know, that is focused on, you know, seed, you know, business. And that's another piece of the puzzle there. And so starting to kind of see what are those different, what's the overall, what are your overall needs and goals? And then what are the different pieces of the puzzle you can fill in? Um, another often barrier is kind of what kind of entity will be applying. So many grants will, <laughs> Um, be limited depending on um, many of them are, you know, either specific to a university, specific to a business, they may be specific to a farm and that might have certain criteria of what it means to be a farm, the um, amount of revenue you might need to be generating from agricultural uh, activities. Um, they might be um, limited to a government agency um, and they might be ones that you can apply to as an individual. Um, some of them may require a group of different, you know, some may require both, you know, producers and university folks to apply together, for example. So knowing kind of those requirements in terms of who's applying is going to be another step in thinking about what grants work for what you want. And then, you know, what is kind of the scale and duration of funding? Most grant funding agencies will have a you know, we'll fund, you know, from this minimum to that maximum in terms of dollars and then in terms of years, you know, this amount of years to this amount of years. And so kind of understanding, you know, okay, well, this is something where we're looking for this to be, you know, a one-year, you know, smaller project. This is a five-year bigger project. The last thing is where are you located? A lot of grants will have some kind of geographic limitations around it. So kind of filtering down to see what are the grants that apply for your area. The thing I'm the most familiar with, and so I'm going to speak about um, more here just to keep it brief. There are lots of different kind of, there's like more foundations and individual donors. A lot of what I've worked with, so I can speak to best is kind of um, federal funding and state funding. Um, what I would point to kind of immediately for anyone that's looking for uh, kind of looking at agriculture grants federally is the um, National Sustainable Agriculture Coalition, NSAC, put together, they have, they call it the Grassroots Guide to Federal Farm and Food Programs. And it pretty much breaks down like every single um, funding source that exists out there for things related to food and agriculture and talks about, you know, within each of the different categories, a lot of these questions of like, who is it who's going to be applying? What's the funding rate? You know, where do you go to find out the details of it? Um, so, yeah, take a look at this. I mean, all this will be recorded, so we, you can find it later. But if you just type in um, grassroots guide um, to federal 
you know, I just I think I wrote grassroots guide to grants and it popped up for me in Google, but um, you can kind of see how they've got it broken down here. It's really pixelated here, but you know things around like you know food literacy and like crop resilience and um, sustainable and organic research and so on. So take a look at that. So I'm going to just walk through a few what I see kind of most promising categories. First, talking about as a an individual seed grower. Um, some of the resources so you don't have to feel like there's a, a barrier a lot of them and i'll talk about that at the end um it, it can be harder to find things as a, as a farmer a lot of this stuff is limited to you know ngos and universities uh, and not to farms which is frustrating um i'd say that the one where i've seen some of the most success is SARE, the sustainable agriculture research and education program the way that this is set up is that it's broken into these different regions depending on where you are in the country in our case we're in the western SARE region so western SARE and this program um, has a lot of different kinds of grants within it but there are a few that are kind of specific to um, farmers there's kind of the farmer rancher grant specifically that is something you can individually submit and then there are some that um, are sort of teams of Profession, quote unquote professional um, and uh, producer and then researcher and research and education that are kind of teams of producers and um, either nonprofits or universities. What I've seen in general, to be frank, is that I've seen a lot of good funding for seed work come out of SARE, but for whatever reason, it seems like it's usually like the Southeast SARE and like the uh, Northeast SARE that um are funding this work western sarah i don't know i mean who knows i i, I it, it seems like um whenever i talk to people who submit uh you know growers that submit them nonprofits that submit it for seed work it hasn't it, it, it's just been you know it may just be coincidence but it's been harder so just to know that but if you look like there's been great work like for example in the southeast um there's been a lot of the kind of uh uh organic breeding work that's been happening at a grassroots level that's been supported by Southeast Sarah, for example, as well as a lot of really good seed work generally. Um, and you can look and kind of see for any of these kind of what are the past projects that have been funded and get some ideas of like, okay, the, this is, you know, don't be limited to that, you know, use your own imagination, but kind of it gives you a sense of the ways that producers have, have used this in the past. So that's Western Sarah. Um, oh, I want to point out this too. So this is something to always to look at and all these. So like, for example, here, the funding, oh, so many of these have funding limitations, which is again, really frustrating. Um, one of the most common ones is there's usually not funding for equipment. Um, they'll fund labor, they'll fund supplies, they'll fund travel, um, but they won't fund equipment and infrastructure. Sometimes there are, um, ways to the way that equipment is defined by the federal government is it has it's five thousand dollars or over so you can get so for example several years ago now we um, were purchasing what we considered equipment for um, seed growers here in california and we called the seed cleaning supplies and we kept each thing under you know each individual item under five thousand dollars and it could count as a supply so you know, if you can keep your things under 5,000. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, okay. When you're talking about <clears throat> equipment or infrastructure, um, there's the equip, there's a, a range of different um, um, sort of subcategories within the um, it's the environmental quality um, incentives program. And this, again, is something direct to farmers with the focus. So I should point this back. Each of these areas, they often have a different focus, right? So SARE, it's in the title there, research and education. They usually are wanting you to do something that involves research and education into sustainable agriculture. So we'll have some kind of research focus where you have a kind of research question that you're answering. or um, And then there's usually an education piece of it where you're sharing about that research or it's connected to the, um, the research this one, the equip is really focused on, you know, 
conservation practices and encouraging conservation practices on farms. So many of you, has anyone gotten an equip grant before? Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know what they got for that, but that that might be. That's certainly one that's often covered. Um, and uh, um, the uh, yeah, a lot of people have used these for high tunnels, for example. The real common support um, that um, that you can get from Equip. We didn't hear what they said on the people who are online. We didn't hear what whoever said that with there is no mic. So I'm curious what somebody said back there. Yeah, so the question uh, was, thank you, um, uh, was did, uh, Jamie was asking, uh, Gina and Soren, did you get an equip um, for your carbon farming work? Soren, if you're, if you're able to, um, uh, if, if, if you're by your, by your computer and able to unmute, uh, folks were curious if um, you had any experience with, with equip or, or, or how you got, um, if there was a grant program that supported some of um, carbon farming. We can also circle, we can circle back to you later too. Hey, Jared. Yeah. Um, so yeah, my name's Rachel. I, I have worked for Strong Roots and um, I can't speak to the specifics of grants, but um, I know that they did have a three-year um, carbon farming um, grant for their hayfield um, and doing the compost application. So I don't know if it was the EQIP grant, but um, they did have grant funding. It was a three-year program. Okay, it's Sora and I'm here. I'm sorry, I missed the question. <laughs> uh, the, the question was, um, what uh, funding program supported your carbon farming? That was the but California... Uh, healthy soils healthy grant. soils you know, cdfa grant and basically right. they just give you money to apply eight tons of compost per acre to your farm and they don't three, give you three years in a row. for three years in a row they don't give you enough money to do it they you know we worked a deal with our compost company so they paid for the compost but we had to you know pay for getting it uh, spread and all that so it was great. It incredibly increased our production like you can't even believe. And, and that's only, we're only, we just did the last year this year. And it's, you know, the theory is it's supposed to last for years to come and reap the benefits for years to come. It looks like both computers that were connected on site have dropped off. So feel free to keep chatting amongst ourselves and we'll see what we can do um, to get- Yeah, I tend to scare people away when I talk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's what it was. <laughs> One more okay. time, Jared. There we go. All right, yeah. <laughs> nice work. Okay, so yeah, the, the value added producer grants, also you can't get equipment with them. Um, the other limitation there is that there's a, many of these grants will have some kind of matching requirement. And this one in this case is a one-to-one -one match where they will only pay for half of whatever you want. Um, you have to come up with the other half or show some kind of in-kind um, contribution. So besides, federal grants. There are state grants. It sounds like there's a healthy soils one I wasn't aware of that, that um, Sora knows about, which sounds like it could be really an interesting one, at least in terms of uh, 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 for supporting healthy soils with the, the compost. The couple that I've seen, there's uh, one that's out currently that's really interesting. Again, these are all ones that are available as um, for individual farms. This is the, it's called the California Underserved and Small Producers Program. And currently they have this one that's available for, um, uh, for drought related loss and irrigation expenses. So people who are in any way you're facing challenges related to 
limited water supply in California. Um, this is one that where they can, you can, uh, they have kind of limitations on what exactly it funds and um, in terms, and it's really all kind of water focused, both in terms of current uh, losses that you can demonstrate and then also like in terms of buying supplies for irrigation. So if you go to California Department of Food and Ag um, and type in grants, you can see their longer list, but this is one that's available to individual farmers. Last thing I was going to uh, show is that beyond those, though, there are opportunities for more collaborative grants. So these are ones that the, uh, the farm isn't able to be the lead applicant, but can be part of it. And I know for many producers, they may essentially, you know, team up if you have, um, you know, if you're working with, a, you know, a nonprofit like Organic Seed Alliance or, you know, your local extension office or, you know, another university and say, hey, this is something I really want. Um, and they can kind of, in you know, some ways just basically be a partner with you for your, you know, vision and ideas. I mean, obviously, it, beyond that, it can be a true, you know, deeper, richer collaboration where it isn't just that they're helping, you know, you access this funding, but can also be something where they're, you know, partnering on the research, partnering on the uh, um, education, partnering on the, the, the seed work as well. But these are all ones that um, are, um, are opportunities. These tend to be a little larger funding pools. Um, so some of them include it in Western SARE, there's the research and education what they call the research and education program. That's kind of their, their largest um, uh, source of their largest grant program. There's the organic research and education initiative that's organic specific, but is um, it can be relatively large depending on how many partners and how many states are involved. Then we have the beginning farmer rancher program that as you may guess is focused on um, educating and supporting um, beginning farmers and ranchers, which they define as, you know, 10 years or less in production. So it's a pretty wide range of what that means to be a beginning farmer. And then uh, the California specialty crop block grants. So these are ones focused on supporting specialty crops, which is really just defined by the exclusion of certain commodity crops, um, you know, things like wheat and corn, um, are you know so but generally you know vegetables and including vegetable seeds yeah okay hey jared we can't hear yeah, you I'm gonna, I'm gonna repeat the question yeah the, the question was how many of these grants have i actually seen supporting seed related work. I mean, I can speak that to um, the Western SARE. Um, this is one that, you know, Organic Seed Alliance we've applied to um, many, many times and have uh, I think gotten one of them um, over the years. Um, in other regions, it seems like it's a little easier than Western SARE. Um, uh, the OREI has been um, one that we've, you know, we've both, you know, led on projects and partnered on projects. And they have funded probably, like when we looked at kind of overall kind of uh, at least organic seed work, like OREI has been the single biggest source of funding for that. They tend, they have written into the language of the, um, of the request for proposals itself that has a priority around supporting organic seed um, and organic, um, uh, you know, crop de variety development. And so that one, I think, I'll make a pitch that it is also this year they're they're increasing the funding for it. it the call for proposals isn't out yet, but it might be out like within a couple of weeks. And there, um, so there's going to be it might be a little easier um, this time around because they just increased the funding pool. Um, beginning farmer rancher is one we've also seen success um, both in our organization and other organizations for supporting seed work. Um, um, and then the the specialty crop block grant. Like I mentioned um, several years ago, we got one of those that helped you know, purchase some seed equipment and do trainings, um, support, um, you know, things like this summit have been helped being supported in the past by the specialty crop block grants um, in California. So that's enough, all those. And then the, the 
uh, sorry, the beginning farmer and farm worker training program is very much a kind of a, I would say a mirror of the beginning farmer rancher, except this is California specific. This one comes through CDFA. Um, it just, for last year, I believe it was the first year they released that. Um, we know um, other organizations that had success with that one. So these ones all have, you know, a, a track record of supporting seed work. Yeah. So those are a few of the, the kind of collaborative, um, both uh, some of the grant funding opportunities, both as individual producers and things that there might be opportunity to um, do collaborative projects with. Does anyone have any questions about that before we move on to the last session of the day? I guess just a clarification of like, so if somebody uh, wanted to apply for one of those grants, would the Organic Seed Alliance collaborate yeah. with a small farmer to do that? I would say that um, yes. Uh, it, it, you know, I think it, it. I mean, to be honest, it depends on the the scope and scale of of what you know the the amount of help that you would need and kind of how that partnership would look. So if it was um, you know something that I, I I personally will do and want to support is like to be able to walk you through the process of, you know, how do you apply? What does it look like? Like, what is kind of the process of thinking about your project and how to frame that and like how to, um, you know, create the narrative that's gonna match up with the um, call for proposals. And then also like think about, you know, what, how you get your paperwork together so I can walk you through and would be happy to um, do that. Um, give me enough lead time, I guess. Like, you know, like if you call me up the day before it's due and say that, you know, but but we can schedule a, a phone call and a Zoom meeting and I can kind of walk you through all of that, you know, and then also if it was something where like we wanted to collaborate on a research project and also, you know, if, if it's something that aligns with both of us, it's, you know, I'd really be interested in that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Conti. You know, when, when it comes to getting our community involved with the university, I'm kind of ashamed to say that we are politically totally inactive. The only university, and California is full of universities, Cal State system, UC system, a bunch of local four-year colleges, community colleges, and within our own community, we do our own little thing and don't get the academic people involved. As a consequence, organic research and education initiative, only UC Davis gets involved and nobody else. And even there, uh, people who are working in, in UC Davis area, they don't seem to know when the research grant periods are, they don't seem to get involved. Crystal Leach is about the only one that I know of within that region that works with Charlie Brummer and, and that group. Uh, nobody, nobody gets involved with soils work either. You know. Uh, there, are, there are things to be done in learning how to get involved with regenerative agriculture and develop a methodology that can be taught to people. One of the most shameful things I notice when I go to, when I go to Georgia, for example, Georgia has got historically black universities and colleges and all of those guys are go going into the SARE program and applying for grants and getting the local farmers involved to work together. We just don't have that. You know, we, we basically sit around, do our own thing, once a year, we come together in these meetings and uh, hooray, you know, we got it going, we are great, but we are not really exploiting the resources that are available to us and, and get, get the academic communities involved because most of these grants are geared towards academic research and, and education and, and initiative program for extension as well. And, and I suggest very well that if you, if you can get the local community colleges and uh, four-year state university people involved, you're also going to be able to attract young people at $15, $16, $20 an hour to give you part-time help. And then that, that will simplify your, your life in a, in a simple way by, by getting the publicly available resources. And I think we need to get more, more active politically to get this whole community come together beyond the small group that meets and discusses. And, 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 and th that's my request to everyone. Yeah, thank you, Condi. That's kind of a good, I think, lead into what we're going to be talking about next. Yeah. Okay.
Yeah, I, I, I think that in terms of, of, yeah, okay, sorry. The question was how open is OSA to doing a fiscal sponsorship of the grant? I think that the, I would say that we are pretty careful about that because it really, you know, in, in, in terms of what that means, it, it really like kind of, legally and reputationally it, 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 it is seen as you know our project and so for that reason like I think that that would be something that would take a lot of kind of careful steps and you know consideration um, yeah and that, that would be the way I, I would I would say that I mean certainly we can talk about it and think through how that might look but um, yeah that's something that that we it would need to be kind of careful about I, I guess yeah. Yeah, but but like I said, I think that you know the 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 support of you know, um, yeah, the, either the support of you know individuals doing the, the the project or yeah, looking at kind of one of these um, larger collaborative projects are going to be easier things. Things where it's pretty clear um, that you know sort of what our role is and what your role is um, would be kind of. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess, yeah, just thinking through that, yeah, I, I, in the past, it, we've thought in kind of fiscal sponsorship as, you know, well, this is great, this is something we can do, and we've learned over the years, that it's like, well, whenever, if we sign off on something, we're committed to, you know, and so depending on how someone does it, it's, it, it, it's reflects on, yeah, yeah, it's got pros and cons, yeah, yeah. Any other questions uh, virtually or in person about some of these grants? Okay, so the question is how, two, two part question, how much time does it take for the paperwork of these grants and then what's sort of the length of time between when you apply and when you get it? I would say both of those things are some of the problems with grant funding and why, you know, you, you can see some of these other models of supporting the work through, you know, selling the seed um, or, you know, other funding models. The paperwork varies depending on the grant program. The, you know, the simplest ones are still um, going to take, um, you know, especially if you haven't done it before, they're going to take a fair bit of time. Even like I would say the Western SARE, you know, is, 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 is there the, the goal intentionally is for them to be really accessible for farmers. Honestly, like I looked at the, I, I like, like they, they, it's, it, it, I, the most recent time that we applied for one, I was really frustrated because I've, I've applied for them in the past and it's like, okay, this is kind of annoying. They, they, they moved recently from um, Utah to Montana and the, the new system is like, it's, it's really pretty, um, it's, it's equivalent to a lot of the more um, larger grant programs for relatively small grants, unfortunately. Um, so, you know, give yourself, um, you know, if it's something you've never done before, it's, you know, maybe gonna take you, you know, cause I do them really fast, um, but, you know, it might take you a couple of weeks, honestly. Um, and then, and then the flip side of it is the funding timelines are really slow generally. So typically, there's you know one there's one time a year when you're submitting it, and then there's often like a six month or so you know lead time when then they review the grant, and then sometimes it can be more like eight or more months before the funding actually is available for you. So you're often like putting in something now with the anticipation of doing something the next year. And so that can be a real hard thing because you don't know if you've got the funding and you're trying to make a plan. And then it's like, okay, well, I wanted to do this. And now we didn't get the funding. And now if we wanna try again, it's like, wait another whole another year or two years between reapplying and then waiting for the cycle. Yeah, yeah. Question two, in the context of this conversation and moving into the next session we're having um, in terms of institutional support. The University of California has a newly founded Organic Agriculture Institute, and I'm one of the academic coordinators for it. Um, and so if there are, uh, if there is interest in kind of like collaborating or having more institutional support around some of these grant programs, uh, feel free to talk to me too, because we have some 
funding and resources at this kind of onset of what we're doing and we're really trying to like be intentional with the program we're building out and having demonstration sites and making videos that are relevant to information that like people in the organic community want um so anyways yeah i'm excited about some of can you put your information so that we can contact you for those of us that are not there yeah yeah definitely i'll put it in the chat thank you uh the organic agriculture institute um yeah so anyways we can definitely talk more but i just wanted to plug that Thank you. Um, Soren, I see your hand up. Yeah, just two quick things. One, I would say some grants, you have to pay costs up front and you get reimbursed on the back end, which can be a lot of money, like the Healthy Soils Grant. It's, yeah. you know, you got to pay for everything up front and eventually a few months later, you'll get a check to cover the, the costs. But, you know, that's also a consideration, I think, you know something to think about. Do you have that money to pay at those things? And can you wait, you know, six months to get reimbursed? Um, the other thing I wanted to share is there's something and I haven't gotten this. So I don't know a lot, but there's something called the Carl Moyer grants. And that's a California grant government. And um. They're trying to get all the really polluting, stinky old diesel tractors out of the out of existence. So they will give you 80% of the cost of a new similar tractor to what you have to get rid of. And um, it sounds bad after you pay 20% of the cost and you got you don't have to breathe those fumes every day again. So and they also do it for other kinds of equipment. So I'm just saying something to pursue if you're a farmer looking for help. Yeah, thank you. I just uh, just to elaborate on that point about the the California Air Resource Board, it you want to check with your county representative for the Air Resource Board. Uh, I'm I'm in Monterey County. I have a subcompact tractor, and that's not one of the items that is covered they don't implement that part of the program they they generally go for like 90 or 100 horsepower tractors so depending on your scale you you may or may not be eligible for that that air resource for money to replace your old diesel but you could check with them because in some cases they do replace like gators and the like and they, i think it goes county by county yeah and i'll say i have a 60 something horsepower and they've told me that it's eligible so we'll see. Yeah, thank but you. it's a great program. Um, I was also going to mention too with the Healthy Soils program for small producers, there is now a way to request an advanced payment. Um, and it's usually not like the whole amount, but that could also be something to look into. Um, so you don't have to like put all of the costs up front necessarily. Yeah, thank you. Anyone have any other questions or comments about this? All right. Well, oh, I have a, I have a quick yeah. comment, oh, yeah, Jared. Please. Just yeah, a, we we can talk about this more maybe in like the general discussion, but there's also like a lot of internal university grants that aren't even mentioned here that you wouldn't even know about unless you have someone at like a professor or research staff at the university who's getting these kinds of emails or contact information. So I think for us, like at, you know, as part of the UC system, like if you contact anyone like at the Organic Institute or like people in the scope project or even Jared who like might know some people who work at these universities, it's a really great way to like hear about these things and know like like if we, it's like sometimes really hard for us, like I think to make connections with farmers, which is why we come to events like this because everyone's like, you know, on their farm working and we're also working and doing our research. So it's really hard to make connections with people even if we're like really interested in working collaboratively or having farmers work with us. Like even if like someone hasn't, like it's always a good idea to reach out to not just you know, say, well, I'm really interested in this project, but I don't know who to contact. Um, it's always a good idea to like reach out to any of us who are here because we might be able to help you 
find someone, even if we can't help, we can help you find someone who can.